and welcome to another edition of Your County at Work, where we bring you to the front lines of hardworking men and women in Newcastle County government. Today we have a special edition of student government where we have students from all over the county of Newcastle that have come here to the chambers in the city of Wilmington to learn student government. Now you will hear from County Executive Thomas P. Gordon and some of the students that attend today's session. Didn't uh, Councilman Cordia, he did a great job of explaining the government. Um, it's an executive, legislative form of government, which means in the city I would be the mayor. In this case, in the county where we represent 15 cities and the unincorporated area, pretty much 60, 70 percent of the state is within this county. And as the councilman was explaining to you, the president here will sit up in that chair during a meeting on Tuesday nights and the council will pass laws, pass a budget, other concerns that the citizens have. And then uh, it either starts in my office or starts here and goes to my office. So I'm kind of an administrator of the government. So I'm responsible for the police, the 911 center, paramedics, the libraries, the parks, land use which is most controversial when you control the land use and with that uh, goes personnel and all the other administrative functions I probably missed a couple of departments sewers special services so we have about 2,000 employees full and part-time and uh, so I might spend some time uh, working with the police department to devise systems that'll keep on top of terrorism or the heroin epidemic or you'll be hearing from the chief of police in a few minutes, so I won't waste a lot of time talking about that because he can do it much better. And, and I work very closely with this council, though most of them are really almost full time. So we may be talking to a number of them during the course of a day about a problem in their area that we're not responding to quick enough or something like that we, or we need help on. So it's a pretty busy job. It's the largest local government in Delaware. And as a large local government, it, it creates, uh, during the course of a day, a whole lot of different issues and variety of issues. Most of it will end up being uh, land use, where somebody can develop, what they can develop, what are the regulations in the process to allow a new hotel or a Wawa or Royal Oaks. And uh, that comes through the land use process, which is a lot of it is regulated. And, but some of it will end up in front of council if it's a rezoning. They tend to have to vote on the final approval of all that. Safety, as I talked about, public safety is, is really huge because all the calls in the county come into one center, 911 center. And I invite you to go look at that beautiful building they have down on DuPont Highway, much better than anything we have. And in that they have, I can tell you, when I came back in office I spent 97 to 204 as county executive came back in 2012 and the police department had fallen behind and we spent a lot of money to make them the most advanced technologically advanced police department in the country and that's a fact so that the computers predict the policing tell the police officers where they need to be why they need to be and it's really intriguing how accurate that process has become so when you see a county police car he's got thousands of dollars of equipment <laughs> and the most advanced algorithms and all that other stuff that Jimmy could tell you about to uh, assure that we know where to be at the right time through a, a complete elaborate study of statistics. Well, I, I know that nobody is as advanced as this. Now, and I invite you to go look at it. We did with this council. We're prepared for the next step, which is terrorism. So there's a big room called, uh, um, what do we call it? The Bell, the Bell Center. Oh, the Fusion Center. It's called Fusion. And somebody picked a name. That meant something different, got me in trouble. But what happens is, um, whatever school you go to, you'll have an app. If you get somebody coming in with a gun in one of the doors, there'll be people who can push the app. Your cameras immediately come up on the screen. And immediately a call goes out to the head of Christiana, who will be with, there within 15 minutes. The police chiefs will be there within 15 minutes. The fire chiefs will be there within 15 minutes, and they will begin to dispatch immediately what needs to be done at your school, and that's called the Fusion Center. We had to develop the app because nobody in the country has it. You can't let me look into your cameras because that would be a bad for the police to be able to 
open up everybody's cameras. We're, we're, we may be at mosque, we're going to be at Jewish Community Center. So we have some, we have to be trusted. So we created an app that only can be open from your end. And we're, we're signing up a lot of uh, schools now. So I know that nobody has that kind of technology in the country. But I can't tell you what Kent and Sussex, who really don't have quite the crime, uh, Kent and Sussex is pretty much policed by the state police, and they're, they're pretty well equipped. So I think that they're in pretty good shape. In the county, they would, the state would all be involved with the, this center, which I invite you all at some point to go look at because it's, it's this marvel technology. And it's the same one that the chief converts on Tuesday to put up on the screen, the police statistics. Well, it's just amazing how quickly technology is changing. And now we're so far advanced that anything we do now, we have to use our own people. Google's doing a platform here. We have, I think, Microsoft doing some stuff here. So that the people that invented the program that we bought now come back to us and say, okay, NC4, where do we go with that? And they'll work with us to try to, and we need our own programmers now to be able to take it to the next step. That's how you know you're on the cutting edge because there's nothing you can buy anymore that will improve your system. So you had a question? So uh, you mentioned earlier you work a lot with um, the government of different uh, incorporated areas within the county like Wilmington and Newark. When uh, Wilmington and Newark need a problem, how can you, how can the police department, how can uh, your funding help them specifically? What's the process by which we're always involved. In, in our 911 center, we dispatch the fire department for Wilmington. We don't dispatch the police, but they're connected. So immediately, if there's an officer in trouble in the city, we'll be responding. Because we may be closer than some cars in the city. We may be in the city on other assignments. Um, and, it, and that's the way it works with all the, the, all the other uh, municipality police departments are dispatched out of 911. So we're right there. If you walk in there, the consul's state's being dispatched out of here. Ellesmere's being dispatched out of here. So we're watching the whole county. And our officers, 400 of them, will be surrounding all these cities or sometimes in the city. So we're going through the city. So it's very well coordinated. And uh, all the fires dispatched out of this one center. So you got all the volunteers, 19 stations. Some of them have three apiece. And then you have the Wilmington fire. And then, of course, you have the paramedics covering the entire county. It's really a, a great um, exercise in technology. And you, you should really look at it because they, too, have just upgraded their computers. So you, you can call and we'll know if you want who's in your house, what kind of medicine you need. And it can all be programmed before the call comes in. And we only access it when you call. So if, if somebody has an idea of a invention or we have an app. If you can think of something that you think we don't have, uh, we'll entertain it. Hi, I'm Matt Gunn. I just want to know what kind of skills you use on, on a daily basis to solve problems. Well, my, my skill set came from, I started in 75 as a police officer. I was promoted to sergeant captain, lieutenant captain. Then I became the chief. And I think a chief of police of a large department where everybody carries a gun it teaches you quickly skills in management. And public safety was half the budget of the county at the time. So I had eight years being chief. Well, I got to learn um, budget, the politics of the government. I knew the people in the government. But the skill set, I think being a police chief is a very tough job because you get that call at 3 o'clock in the morning. We're going into this house. Right now there's a barricade subject, SWAT's getting ready to take off, what would you like to do? I always made my phone across the room so I would be awake when I got those calls. And you make life and death decisions as chief of police in some of the worst case scenarios. And I'm proud to say when I got back into the police department, there hasn't been a problem with the community or a shooting or anything like that, police shooting. And I don't think it's by accident. We instituted immediately controls on deadly force, which is a computer program again, big as half this room. They go in, they practice on the midnight shift, real computer simulated situations where you may have to take a life or not take a life. So you, you know it's acceptable and I have a very high standard on deadly force. I have a very high standard on use of force. You don't do it unless your life is being threatened or that of somebody with you. So 
from that skill set, it's a little different running a whole government. But I don't think it's as hard as when I was chief, because I don't make those decisions anymore. I yell at him. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. Thank you, man. All right, now I am here with Nelson. And Nelson, would you please um, introduce yourself to our viewing audience, let them know what school you attend and how you got um, chosen to be a part of the student government on today. Um, actually, I, um, my name is Nelson Cruz Calazo. I go to Thomas McCain High School. And I was actually recommended um, by my guidance counselor, Ms. McNeil. Uh, Neil, sorry, I always call her McNeil. Um, <laughs> But um, I got interested in this, my friend Darion Robinson, I don't know if you know him, um, he actually did the Boys State and I think, I don't know what, you know, role he played in, but it was pretty, it was a pretty big role. And um, he seemed very excited about it and um, for three years I've been doing mock trial, so I'm familiar with like the government and how court works and all of that. So I was, I was pretty familiar with it, so I figured this might be uh, another great experience for um, not only if you want to go into law school, or if you're considering it in the future. All right. Are you considering going to law school in the future? Um, I'm thinking about it. Um, I, I really like uh, science and technology. I want to be um, an astrophysicist and have a minor in religion. Two separate different things, right. but I, I plan on making it work. Okay. And what is your, if you don't mind, um, your um, what's your GPA? Um, I think my GPA weighted now is a 4.2. Two, wait, wait, three. wait, wait, wait. You said a 4.2 two or 3? Or 3, yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, I guess those AP courses kind of seem in there. I have four of them, so. Okay. Yeah. All right, great. All right, thank you so very much. You're and welcome. I wish you well in your future endeavors. Thank you. Uh-huh. <laughs> now we have Nicole with us. How are you, Nicole? I'm doing just fine, thank great. you. Great. So let the viewing audience know um, what school you attend and what grade you're in. Okay. I'm in 11th grade at Middletown High School um, in uh, Middletown, Delaware. Okay. Now you have on a uniform. Is that the uniform of Middletown? I'm actually in the AFJROTC Air Force branch for my school, and that's how I was chosen. Okay, great. So today, did you learn anything that you didn't know prior to coming here? It definitely touched upon things that we've talked in school and in our uh, ROTC classes and just from different mentors that I've had over the recent, um, for the past years, but um, it just kind of brought a new perspective on a lot of things, yeah. Okay, great. So um, you plan on going into the armed forces, correct? Actually, no. Um, apparently with my medical history that uh, they kind of will deny me because of the medicines I'm on, but um, I would devote everything I can into the VFWs and stuff because I have family members that have served and, and have done great things through it. Yes. Um, just as you have, I have two and veterans are like very um, dear to me. So what are your future plans? I actually want to go into uh, anesthesiology. Um, I've been looking into a couple other things as well. So I'm kind of un still undecided, but I'm definitely I'm on the right track of where I want to go. All right. Is there anything today that you found interesting um, or anything new that you didn't know prior to coming here? I thought it was surprising that the, when the chief went up and he spoke, that the only thing that he really like focused around was the opiate um, drug problem that there is here. And I'm, I'm not from mid uh, Wilmington. I'm from Middletown, so it's just kind of a weird circumstance because we don't hear a lot of that where I'm from because I live on the back roads of a very small town. So, okay. all right, okay. Well, thank you so so much for coming today, and we wish you well in your future endeavors. Thank you. All very right, much. you're welcome. Bye bye. Now we have Deshawn with us. Deshawn, um, if you would tell the viewing audience your name, what school you attend, and what grade you're in. Uh, I'm a junior at William Penn High School. Uh, I was selected to come here because of my rare, well, let's say my rare ability with writing and my rare ability to lead in my school since there's very few leaders in, in my school. I actually have a unique taste in who I actually choose to be a part of A-Team and choose like when to get the work done. Okay. Well, congratulations on that. Um, tell me out of um, what you've heard so far, what has like gotten your um, utmost attention? Well, what has gotten me so far is when the uh, president was up here uh, introducing the uh, fact of being a better leader and had 
gave me a few ideas of how I could start leading uh, some new teams and gave me a few new ideas to uh, start some new clubs and mm -hmm. at my new school, actually. Right. So, yeah, um, Council President Bullock did say, I mean, there was a question asked, um, by a young lady as you know what voice do you all have so you definitely have a um, strong voice out in the community so thank you for being a positive role model for our youth right, thank you you're welcome anything else would you would like to say uh, no not really no? okay all right thank you so very much thank you. all right now um, we are here with Sarah. Sarah, if you would be so kind and introduce yourself to our viewing audience. Let them know what um, school you go to, what grade you're in. I'm Sarah Holding. I go to Dover High and I'm a junior. Okay. And how did you happen to get here on today as far as um, being selected to come? Um, I'm in ROTC and my um, instructor told, um, recommended me to come here. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so far, um, the open questions, I thought um, that the students here has asked phenomenal questions. Was there anyone that um, spoke that, like, sparked your attention the most? When they were talking about how everyone's developing a lot of, like, malls and roadways and how it could affect the, uh, um, the environment and, like, the trees and animals. Because I don't know, like, that's personally, like, a big deal for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. So what do you plan on doing um, in the future? I am planning on going to the military for Air Force. Very yeah. good. Now, listen, this is a true story. Um, growing up, I wanted to go into the Air Force. However, I was really um, timid, intimidated by boot camp. I felt like if they yelled at me, I would like start crying and I wouldn't make the boot camp. So I'm sure you have some tough skin, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, well, inside um, the program, we do drill and that like does a lot of um, yelling. So I've been prepared okay. and like the inspection stuff. And then in another program, um, Raiders within it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a physical activity and I've done pretty well in it. So. Okay. I think I can do the you boot camp. Do, you can do it. You can do it. That's the plan. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, we wish you very well in your future endeavors. Thank All you. right. All right. And now I am here with Rumi. Welcome, Rumi. How are you today? I'm doing just fine today. Great. So, Rumi, how did you become a part of student government today? Uh, well, I was always interested in this program, and um, I was talking to my, my counselor about it. He recommended that this was something I should do. And, you know, I, I thought it was very interesting to meet, of course, the county executive as well as the, uh, the chief of police. So that's something I'm just interested to see what people have to say. Okay. So um, you mentioned County Executive Tom Gordon and Chief Elmer Setting. What um, did either one of them said that really um, touched you? Well, I was very inspired by what the chief had to say because um, I've, uh, I've, I've seen him talk before, and he's so so frank with what what he wants to do essentially and um what, what i found very interesting is how how um the first thing he said when, when he came to answer our questions he said you know i'm the chief of police you might have some reservations about asking questions about like legalizing drugs or something right but you know you can ask me whatever because you know he really is a definition of community policing he wanted to talk to the community he wanted to answer our questions honestly and that's what he did most definitely. And, um, of course, I get to see him and touch base with him on a daily basis. But today I had a, fa a, a newfound respect for him. I thought that um, the questions that he, um, that you all asked, he answered them not politically correct, but he spoke from his heart, which I thought was really important. Yeah, I mean, if there's anything we really need, we need a lot more people who speak honestly, especially about something so important as, you know, keeping our neighborhoods and our communities safe. And, you know, I, I now feel more safe knowing that someone so competent is currently in charge of our police force. Yes. All right. So thank you so very much. Before we go, what are your future endeavors in life? Well, um, I'm kind of undecided. I'm interested in business finance, but, you know, for the last year or so, I've really been interested in public administration or, or public policy. And, you know, this is bringing me closer and closer to potentially working with the government. Very good, because we need young men like you to um, be the future of our government. So thank you so much for your time.
Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. This brings us to another conclusion of your county at work. On behalf of County Executive Thomas P. Gordon and all of us at NCC TV, we'd like to thank you so much for tuning in. Please make sure that you like us on Facebook and stay tuned for more special episodes of your county at work. This is your host, Wayna Dobson, signing off until next time.